Hey, yourself. what is going on, everybody? Welcome to Super Lunch Bros Podcast, episode number 166. I am Brendan. And I'm Nate. Yay, he's here again. Oh, yeah. Sweetness. All right, today we're going to go over uh, UFC 278, Usman versus Edwards, numero dos. Uh, we're going to talk about the shocking conclusion to the title fight between the two. We're going to talk about Paula Costa versus Luke Rockhold and that weirdness. Um, Rob Devalishvili versus Jose Aldo. Uh, Yuanan versus Lucy Pudilova. And Tyson Pedro versus Harry Hunsucker. Before we get into that stuff, if you like MMA, if you like podcasts about MMA, if you like the UFC, Bellator, or PFL, I cover all that stuff. Subscribe to the channel so you know when the next video is coming out. All right, let's get started. Okay, so we have a new welterweight champion in the UFC. Thoughts? Your audio's off. <laughs> My first thought is to be able to communicate. My second thought is, uh, I believe if we go back to the last one I did with you, I completely forgot that Leon Edwards was fighting Kamara Usman when we started talking about who should fight next. Yeah. Basically completely washed over this fight as if... It was a foregone conclusion. Yes. Probably not the only one, but yeah, a little, little apology to Leon Edwards for overlooking him. That's my initial thought. So, all right. Uh, I mean, here's my, like, my initial thought was, so it, he ends the fight via fifth round uh, KO uh, with yep. one minute left, one minute left to go in the fight in a fight that he is losing. He's about to lose. You, the commentary team addressed oh, this yeah. multiple times. They're saying... <laughs> He oh. maybe won the first round, but no, the he next won three. The, he did win the first round for yeah. sure. Uh, with I mean, the takedown, the control, the damage, everything went to him in the first round. But no, then, I agree. But how the judges see it, he maybe won the first round. Oh well, I can tell you. All right. So according to the judges' scorecards, because they have to turn them in, uh, all three judges. Okay. So, so if you look at them, all three judges had it. I will show the audience. Uh, all three judges had it 10-9 for Leon Edwards. And then yep. all the other three rounds for... I mean, they all got it right. I think they were pretty easy rounds to score. Yeah. Um, so here's my takeaway. One, I like Edwards more now seeing his emotions after this fight than the previous ones because the chip-on-the-shoulder attitude from him was not doing him any favors. Uh, some guys wear it a lot better. Some guys come across as arrogant. Some guys just come across as unlikable. He came across as unlikable, plus he had really bad luck. And, you know, it, not he got passed over for the title shot because he couldn't get out of the U.K. during the pandemic. So because of that, you know, we had the stupid Jorge Masvidal fight. And then we had the second. We had to have a rematch of that one for some reason. Fine. And then Leon Edwards goes in there and destroys uh, Nate Diaz for 24 minutes and then gets cracked in the last minute and then looks like shit. And then everybody wants to say, like, oh, man, this guy's nothing. And to be fair, so was I. I mean, like, dude, if Usman cracks him, you know, like, how is he not going to go down? And, you know, Usman never really landed a good shot this whole fight. He didn't land a really hard shot. I don't think he ever landed one that compromised Edwards. I think most of the most of the story was just his grappling. He I think I think there was like there was one uppercut that was pretty flush, but that was I think it was it was like an uppercut behind the head combo. I want to say it was second or third round. But that was the only real like flush shot that he landed. Yeah. That looked I like mean, it could have. In the second round here, you know, the first round, obviously, it went to Edwards, uh, if you want to look at the striking numbers, 13 to 6 yeah. in favor of Edwards, plus he had a takedown, which was unique, because everybody's like, that's Usman's first time getting taken down. No, it's the first time someone got credited taking him down. Colby Covington took him down. Anyway, in their second fight. So, uh, Edwards put the body triangle on him, and, you know, was working for a rear naked choke to end that first round, so it definitely went to Edwards. Interesting mm -hmm. round, because it's not what you expected. Now... The next three rounds, um, yeah. Usman grabbed the fence and grabbed the uh, grabbed gloves of Edwards multiple times. Um, so he, and then in the second round, Edwards got his foot caught in the edge of the cage. Uh, so there's a crease where the cage meets the uh, the floor. The flooring gets tucked underneath. So there's this little crease like this, like right there, right. And yep. in between there, if your foot goes down, it can actually get stuck in there, and that's what it looked like it happened. And Usman took advantage of that. Um, 
you can tell when uh, Edwards lands well because Usman wanted to throw a couple jabs and then open up his arms and go for a clinch, and then he would go for a takedown. So in the fir- in this round two, round three, round four, almost carbon copies of each other. Yes, the striking numbers are all over the place, uh, 36, 10, and 22 uh, for two, three, uh, two, three, and four, respectively, for Usman. So obviously the amount of strikes he landed changed, but the domination on the ground continued. So yep. uh it was just it was just one way traffic and Edwards wasn't able to really do anything. And then in the fifth round, it was kind of turned into more of the same, but you know, it was contested more on the feet in this fifth round than the previous round. So, you know I'll say while Usman was landing more, I felt like throughout the fight, even in the rounds he was losing, Edwards seemed more comfortable on his feet. Yeah. Like even when from a pure defensive standpoint, even when you know, Usman was trying to land shots, and then there were times when Edwards didn't seem like he was answering. He still seemed very in the moment and comfortable. It didn't seem like he was panicked at any point. It seemed like he felt a little bit more confident on the feet than I think Usman did. Yeah, and he had that that shell where he you know covers up. Yep. You know he'll uh, he'll cover up and he'll sit there, and it's not a good visual, and you do take damage doing that, but you can mitigate damage. There's lots of fighters who do that. Um, Alistair Overeem being one of them, he throws up the shell, and then he waits for you to kind of punch yourself out and then continues to fight after that. So, and he also has been knocked out because he does that. It's, it's one of those things where, you know, if you're really good at it and you can cover up and uh, mitigate a lot of that damage, you can make your opponent waste a ton of energy. Um, it's, it wasn't going to happen. That's not how Usman no. fights. Usman's not going to, you know, he'll land a couple and then he goes for a takedown and that's pretty much what he did. So in this fifth round, it was contested more on the feet and, uh, <laughs> Oh boy! So there was a low kick or yep. a supposed low kick, and just like the one against Colby Covington, it did not go low. It landed right to the belly. But this time, via replay, everybody saw it, including the ref, and told Usman to get the fuck off the sidelines. Let's go. That did not go low. We need to fight. Yep. Yeah. So, so Usman has a habit of you can call it being uh, a veteran. You can call it. Um, experience in the cage, he takes advantage of every single aspect of the rule set. Everything that he can take advantage of, he does. You know, he doesn't shy away of, uh, from a technique or a strategy because it's not going to be looked upon favorably. He does not give a shit. Does not care. You know, foot stomps, loves him. Kicking a dude in the butthole when he's on the ground, does it. Doesn't care. He'll he'll do that and he'll hold your foot while he does it so you can't get up and now he can recover. So visually... Uh, technique wise, is that going to finish the fight? No, but guess what? He was rocked by Burns, and now because of this, he gets to recover. Um, getting kicked low or making it look like you got kicked low, even if it doesn't damage you. Like, I don't think that shot from Edwards really did a ton of damage to Usman, no. like the one from Covington did. The one from Covington definitely affected him. This one, I don't know if it did, but it doesn't matter. He, he took, gets he, recovery time. All he did was t- take advantage of where the kick landed. So, in in my opinion, based off what I see from him, anything that happens like around the belt line, he's just going to crumble. He's just going to like go like this on purpose because he knows he'll get, he'll get time to reset. Um, before the knockout happened, I actually wrote down, I was like, I was like, there's this combination of Trevor Whitman and Usman is one of the deadliest combinations in UFC history. Uh, his coach and, by the way, that still stands. I think yeah, I even say, though I he think, lost, I still think that. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You can't go get that many. And I know some of those wins or a lot, like those early wins, weren't with Trevor Whitman. But you can tell the difference with Trevor Whitman. He has stepped it up so much, um, and he, you know, nearly got it done again. He just ducked when he should have dipped and catches a head kick right to the side, right to the right side of his head. Um, a couple, couple of things I want to take away, and then I'll throw it to you. Um, one, like it was hard for me to feel great for anyone in this because Edwards has been kind of like had such a pissy attitude towards this whole thing, and then Usman has like this whole fake swagger. It just like this whole attitude towards him where he acts like nothing affects him, but then he gets real butt hurt when someone says stuff. It just doesn't. It doesn't make for a likable champion when he's out there in front of the media, when he's talking to someone in long form, like when he's been on Rogan's podcast, he seems like a great guy, dedicated father and family man, excellent individual. 
So, you know, I don't dislike Usman. I hate the character that he plays. Um, and then the the thing that I want I took away from this was the road to being the greatest of all time just got longer for him. Oh, yeah. But remember, my greatest of all time is GSP, and for many reasons, but I don't need to get into all of them. Uh, one of them is he beat every single person that he ever fought. He didn't beat them the first time necessarily, but he avenged every one of his losses. And he still is the greatest of all time, in my opinion. So that means Kamaro could definitely overtake him in in terms of that if he comes back and dominates Edwards. And he's going to have to have a couple more fights against really game opponents. No more Jorge Masvidal bullshit. Um and then all yeah yeah it, like and I'm I'm guess I'm happy for Edward seeing the emotion on his face and finally you know that persona that he puts on kind of came his walls came down and he uh, really let it all out so it's pretty cool to see. Yeah, that was probably very similar thoughts for me. I think <laughs> my biggest thing looking at this is a little bit closer to what is going to be the next step because I while it was an awesome win. I don't see how Edwards beats him in the rematch. No. Like, <laughs> no. I, like what is no his, offense what's to Leon his path Edwards. to victory? Yeah, like I I don't think Kamara is going to fall for that a second time. And without being able to land that a second time, I really don't see where his path to victory is. Like that's So, I mean, we're both talking like yeah. right now as if that's what's going to come next. And if we look at the rankings here, you've got I I don't see a human possibility outside of like a camp injury where Usman doesn't avenge like immediate rematch. Yeah, I mean, you've got Colby Covington. Uh, Leon Edwards was number two, so he'll be number one. He'll be uh, the champion, and then my guess is Usman's going to be the number one challenger with Colby yep. being number two. Uh, Kamzat Chemaev is number three. Uh, Gilbert Burns number four. Bilal Muhammad. Uh, number five, and he's on a win streak as well, so it's hard to deny him. Uh, and Stephen Thompson's still floating around. I don't think he'll ever get another title shot. But no. now, hold on, hold on. I wrote, I wrote down. I was like, if Usman doesn't get the rematch immediately, or, or if somehow Edwards manages to get a win a second time, this division is wide open because oh, yeah. Usman's not getting another title shot against. Leon Edwards. We're not going to see that. If nope. if he gets the immediate rematch and loses the, the rematch, he's not getting a, a title shot again. So now we're talking about Colby Covington versus Leon Edwards. That's a fun fight because I think Covington can beat him. I think Chemayev can I, beat him. <laughs> Gilbert Burns can beat him. He I hasn't say, fought any of these guys. I think anyone in the top five can beat him. Uh, Bilal Muhammad's going to have a tough test, but I think he has a possibility. And when they did fight, you know, Muhammad was getting a little bit picked apart, but then he, you know, got poked in the eye real bad. I think Stephen Thompson could beat him. And that's like, that's what makes it interesting again is like this whole time I was under like the assumption that Usman's reign was going to ruin Thompson's chances of ever being uh, a champion for, for good reason. We've seen him yeah. get dominated by Muhammad and by Burns via grappling. So Usman could definitely do it. But looking at the rankings now, seeing, you know, I don't know if, if Brady comes out there or Jeff Neal. Well, he already beat Jeff Neal. I don't know. Whoever Thompson fights next and if he just gets an impressive win and somehow the stars align and he can get a title shot again against someone not named Kamaru Usman, he has a, a real chance at getting a title. Like, oh, yeah. Him versus Colby Covington. I still favor Colby. I think Leon could give him some challenges. I would f probably favor Chemayev and Burns. So I think Edwards and Edwards is probably the best chance <laughs> he has to get the title. So I think that's kind of fun. I agree. No, no, that would be fun for Steven Thompson. I also think now we're in a situation where Kobe Covington has his best shot at being champ. Uh, yeah. If, yeah. If, yeah. If Kumaro either loses the next one or isn't able to make the next fight, you know, you know, unless Kobe has a fight, he's going to be training to step in immediately for whoever potentially like he's going to be in basically full fight camp mode during the rematch prep between Usman and Leon Edwards, or at least I would be. Yeah. And Chemayev, Chemayev is going to fight. Uh, well here, I'll show you guys the rankings. Um, 
Chemayev, who do you think Chemayev's fighting next? He'd be like, oh, he fought Burns. Oh, Muhammad would be a good challenge. Oh, Thompson would be interesting. Brady's on his way up. Fat Masvidal. And then all the way down here, Michelle Pereira. Oh, that would be fun. Oh, no, he's fighting fucking Nate Diaz. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, not in the rankings. Um, he's going to have to fight Nate Diaz next. And then, I mean, that's a, honestly, that's a great move for Chemayev because that's just a money fight. And While you're popularity. hanging around in the ratings. Yeah. And he was going to do it anyway. Like, he was he was set to fight him regardless. And then now, because Usman lost, it's probably good that he had it on the books already. Like, honestly, if I'm Kobe Covington, I'm probably a little jealous that I'm not getting the Nate Diaz fight. Like, goddamn. <laughs> yeah. I think Covington versus Diaz would be fun. Like, the, the battle of cardio. That'd be fun. Yeah. Battle of cardio and shit talking. I know that'd be fun to watch. I, yeah, I, I'm a little, I'd be I'm a little disappointed. One. That's not the fight. But. Yeah, now you got me like. Uh, now you got me like wanting that fight. That would be that'd be a blast. Yep. Um, I don't know anything else. Anything else from this fight? Because this this is a pretty big moment. Like I mean, watching like, that head kick. The, like where do you the, where does that rank? There's not a lot, in so was like, there's not a lot to analyze because like, <laughs> yeah, Kumar was gonna win yes. and he got knocked out. Yep. Like, shit happens like it was wild uh that's a pretty big upset like that that is a huge huge upset i'd actually i would rank it above the ronda rousey holly holmes upset in retrospect yes and also like in the mo in the moment i think that one felt bigger but not, that's what i mean like well, in retrospect in the moment it didn't feel bigger for me because i knew rousey was garbage <laughs> like i just i knew she was garbage and like even in retrospect that like if you look at holly holm and how she's competed and how that division was still in its infancy and i think ronda rousey got popular at the right time and had the right amount of the right fights and got lucky a couple times it, like there's there's a lot that led into that where I I never was high on Ronda Rousey like whether you dislike Usman or not like whether you like him or you like the way his fights or whatever you can't argue with his skill level. I I agree. I don't think this is bigger than Matt Sarah GSP. No, oh, no, no way. I th I think that one's still bigger. I think uh, uh, the Dillashaw my the biggest one in history for me is uh, uh, Dillashaw, Dillashaw versus Barrow. The yeah. first, the first one, and yeah. I'll, I'll I think tell you this why. Is, I think this is bigger than Bisbing Rockhold. Oh yeah, because yeah. Uh, I mean, at the time, it was kind of a foregone conclusion that Rockhold was just going to beat him again. But yeah, thinking about it, like people knew that Rockhold could be beaten. He wasn't like this yeah. unkillable force. Uh, we'll talk about him next, actually. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> but there was. I think, for, for me, this one ranks up there with the Dillashaw one because... Yeah. I'd say top five. Not bigger than Silva Weidman. Mm, no. No. Because, like, it, I think Usman is plagued a little bit by just the time in the UFC. Like, there, there is more of a feeling of everyone is beatable now. Especially at the high skill levels. Versus... Yeah. Plus, he has versus had, the times where like dominant champions were truly like I don't know how it's fucking possible to beat them. His strength of schedule. Plus, he's been shown uh, to have weaknesses, right? Yeah. Like, uh, oh, oh, I wrote this down, but I didn't mention it. When Edwards had his back and was going for the choke, I got so pissed off because it reminded me of Damian Maya getting that fucking position taken away from him by the ref when they were both in that 50-50 position when he was like on his he it wasn't even 50-50 he was on Usman's back but Usman had his arm tied in there like his shoulder was be, almost being pulled out of its socket and that was preventing him from fully taking the back and yep. then Usman makes a face and then the referee uh separates him huge yeah, that was... mistake let it play out you know let that play out and it it lies where it lies. Like if yep. they sit like that for five minutes, I don't give a shit. He's got a dominant position. Don't take it away. Yeah, he worked real hard to get that, and that shows and me if that if Edwards could take his back and lock up that body triangle as easy as his, as he did, fucking Maya Maya could have done some work on the ground. Yeah, that would have been yes. That would have been interesting. So, um, 
the, the reason why this one ranks up there for me is I have I have this even above Amanda Nunes losing to uh, Juliana Pena. Uh, Juliana Pena beating Amanda Nunes was not a big surprise to me, although I yeah. I wasn't expecting it. But seeing all the weaknesses that of Nunes come back up, I was like, oh shit, yeah, this, of course this could happen. I've seen it uh, in fights before, and now it just played out not in her favor. Um, I think the reason why the TJ Dillashaw one ranks even higher for me than the Anderson Silva one is Dillashaw stepped in on short notice. He wasn't even supposed to be there. It didn't work his way. I mean, obviously he was good and his only loss to a Sun Sao at that point was a split decision and it was kind of bullshit, but well, and Dillashaw was a dominant performance. It wasn't just like, that's a what strike. I mean. It was like that five fucking that a, minute, five rounds. Yeah. That was a human being coming from, Pretty much obscurity and beating a guy that was a dominant champion. The pound not for, just he like, was ranked yeah. like right behind Jose Aldo, pound for pound best in the world, undefeated yeah. for like nine years. And not just like a little bit, like supremely trounced him. It wasn't even close. There was yeah. not a moment in that fight where you're like, like, oh, he this is back and forth. No. Dude, after that first right hand landed from Dillashaw, he just put it on him and destroyed him. And I also don't want to hear about it like, oh, well, he was on stuff. So was fucking everybody. I don't care. Like all the, like everybody from that Nova oh. Unyao camp, you're gonna tell me that they're not on stuff. Get the fuck out of here. Um, I mean that's it. I think obviously the the next step is Usman, uh, Usman versus uh, Edwards number three, and yep. then well, he's, oh I totally forgot about that because that changes how the narrative goes because they've already fought they've fought twice already, so it's back and forth. So the next fight yep. is the trilogy fight. So. Even if if Edwards loses the next one, he might not get the immediate rematch. I don't think he will. No, because he's already got uh, two losses to him. Unless it is a war, unless it is like supremely back and forth, and something so compelling that like fight of the year level. I don't yeah. think he gets a rematch. Okay, and but that's that's the other thing I didn't think about. If Edwards beats him again, Usman could get another title shot because he does have a win over him, and he was. I don't th- I don't think so either, but yeah. it does change the narrative slightly because it's they've already fought twice. And it's very rare for four I'm, fights to occur, but it has happened. Considering how it went down with Whitaker, I don't think Usman would get an immediate rematch. Like, that's where my mind goes. Like, I think if he lost again, he'd get bounced back, have a refresh fight, and then come back at it. Yeah, or he just clears out the division and now he can't get a title again. <laughs> it, shit happens. It happens in a lot yeah. of places. All right, let's move on to the uh, co-main event. I don't, I, I don't know if this was the co-main event technically, uh, but anyway, it occurred right before the main event, so I call that the co-main event. Yeah. Paul Acosta uh, defeating Luke Rockhold via unanimous decision, thirty twenty-seven on all judge scorecards. Uh, this one was weird. It, do you know what this reminded me of? What? This reminded me of like an old school UFC fight. Oh yeah, like like the before sloppy the days technique. Of, yeah, before the days of like really good conditioning and like everyone having a gas tank, uh, <laughs> like the, oh man, and like once people kind of like ran out of gas, just going for shit. Like that's what this felt like. Just like oh hey, cool. This is this is like UFC fifty seven. You know, looking at these striking numbers, I thought it was going to be way more blown out than this. Um, you got. 27 to 19 in the first round in favor of Costa. So um, Rockhold was really trying to grapple and Costa was landing some big shots and even took Luke down for a second. But then Rockhold landed three really big body kicks as Paula Costa calls him in. Um, One of my least favorite things from any fighter, by the way, is when they're getting hit really fucking hard and then they're laughing and then saying, come on, do it again, acting like it's nothing. Yeah. Regardless of... Regardless of the state of your brain, those shots do damage, right? So if you land a really hard shot, that counts as points. And you could jab me 100 times, but my hard shot counts for more. So you smiling and doing stuff, um, it's, I don't know. Like, there's a female fighter who does that shit all the time, and it drives me nuts. So anyway, uh, uh, Luke looked really tired. Um He's just throwing like one big, like at the end of the first round or start at the second round, you know, uh, Rockhold was barely able to walk around on his, on his own. 
Uh, it was super fucking tired. And, you know, he got outstruck in the second round, 30 to 23. Again, not as big of a difference as you th- no. thought and watching like, it. And there were some sh- there were some shots from Luke where it was, like it seemed in terms of calling it a significant strike or like strikes that caused damage. There were times when it seemed like Luke was causing Costa some decent damage, despite not really like rocking him. Yeah, he was landing like, some heavy fucking shots. Yeah. Especially in this last round, even though so it was sixteen to nine in favor of Costa in the last round, but Rockhold landed like a couple left hands that put Costa like back into the middle of the cage. It was yep. like he was landing fucking hard. Um, he was also swinging from his hips, so you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and but Rockhold was exhausted, and then uh, I, you'll see it. In the, you guys probably saw it in the thumbnail, uh, the picture of him. Uh, Rockhold's like, cause he broke his nose. He got his nose broken the first round. So it's just constantly bleeding the whole time. And yep. he's just like rubbing his bloody face and his bloody nose and breathing all over Costa to cover him in the blood. And like, I don't, I don't know what it was about that, but it made me love Luke Rockhold. I, I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> I know that's weird. I know that's weird. But there was something gritty about it. Like he was when he was taking all this damage and you know, Luke Rockhold's never been one of those guys to fight through adversity. He's always one of the ones where like when the going gets tough, you kind of see him crumple. Yeah. And there are plenty of moments he could have just quit in this fight. And he didn't, man. He just fucking like he just like he was telling he said like fuck you. He's like, fuck you, fuck you, and then throws that left hand and then <laughs> lands it on him like Dude, it was this gritty, raw, like just pure emotional performance from him. When and then at the end of it, like all of his frustration and everything as he's on top of Costa, he's just like, "Fuck you!" Like you can have all this blood. Yeah. Well, I think I think a big part of it was he knew it was his last one. Like I think walking into the ring, he probably yeah he knew he knew it was over, and he was like, "I'm just his entire career of frustration." He was just gonna lay out there. Yeah, I mean that's what. So, I I told that's what I mean though is there was something about it, and then plus the way he was talking after the words, and he was just like, I don't know, I don't know, Joe. He's like, I tried as hard as I could. I, I'm just old. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, I just don't want. I like, I can't do this anymore. Um, dude, I you know like I I know it might have been the elevation or the two year layoff or three year layoff, but it's also thirty seven. Yeah, and it's just he's a bigger guy. He's always had to cut a lot of weight. And his last fight at light heavyweight didn't go so well. And um, yeah, you know, I I'm not a fan of Paulo Costa. I don't like the fact that uh, if you know his history, um, you know that he's his whole team around him is like ridden he's with a controversial PEDs. fighter. <laughs> yeah, well, but it's like so. I don't have a problem with PED use, right? In general. But when it comes to a fighter, I am not a fan of someone break actively breaking the rules, and then because of that, like it allows them to fight. But there's, there's just no way, and it's not that there's no way. Like, oh, that's impossible. He must be like genetic. Blah blah blah. Mm-mm. There's like a whole team history around everyone right. around him. Who have he is got, genetically gifted. He just, oh, I'm sure. Also, yes, obviously, yeah. He just also. And some other gifts that he gives himself. And, like, that's the other thing is, like, he got tested right before the fight and, like, he got upset about it. Dude, shut the fuck up. Like, you brought this on yourself. I don't care. Of course you're getting tested before the fight. Yeah. (laughs) But, like, whatever. Anyway, um... I'm never... I've never been a fan of Paula Cosa. I feel like he was given, like, a free... A free ticket to get the title shot and then actually, like, he absolutely got smoked. And every time he's faced someone of, uh real character and real grit he comes up short um and even in moments against like you saw the way with marvin vittori when he fought him he's like putting his arms up and doing all this stuff as he's getting picked apart like you can't do that shit and And, it's only it's only flashy and cool if you can back it up like that like shit talking only works if you're actually backing it up that's the problem Yeah, and in this case, you know, I could see why people were excited about it and like him because he was winning the fight, so saying that shots, but it it doesn't matter. Um, He was technically winning the fight, but he wasn't like, he wasn't actually winning the heart of the fight. Like, he wasn't. He wasn't the one, he wasn't the one where, like, he would move in forward and land a couple big shots and then he would back away. He wasn't. Yeah. Like, if. It wasn't like a dominant, like, cool, he's just picking this dude apart. 
No, and that's the thing is yeah. like he had plenty of moments and opportunities where he could have d- done that, but he couldn't. And then fucking Luke Rockhold like showed incredible heart. And, and at the end of it, I came away saying like, oh, Paula Costa is still a bitch. Like he can't yep. fucking handle adversity. Um, like, yeah, getting hit in the face is adversity. But when it comes to like, like putting together it, a win. It was a unanimous decision. It was not a dominant win. No. Like he, he almost looked really bad and weak against a guy that's coming know, off six, a three year layoff. Six years older than him, hasn't fought since twenty nineteen in a different division. Yes. Yeah, and did not look good in that fight either. Uh yeah. looking at the looking at the rankings here, you got uh Adesanya number one, obviously. Uh you yep. got Robert Whitaker, Jared Cannonier. So Whitaker's never getting another title shot unless, you know, he clears out the division yet again, which in my opinion, <laughs> might <do. laughs> he, he might be able to do. Whitaker like was very competitive in their last fight, uh, him and Adesanya. Um, and you know, Whitaker's reaction to after that fight really spoke spoke a lot to me. And then I I rewatched it and I saw what he was talking about because um, Rogan went up to him. And he's like, "Are you surprised about?" And he's like, "I'm just surprised how well it was working." He's like, "My game plan worked exactly how I wanted it to. I just don't know how I didn't get the win." Uh, and if you go back and watch, uh, there is an argument to be made based off of different judging criteria that, you know, Whitaker was the one who did more in three of those rounds. So there's a way to give him that fight. Um, that being said, it's still an official loss, and uh, Adesanya doesn't seem super excited about taking him on again. Uh, Jared Cannonier coming off the loss to Adesanya. He has already fought Whitaker, so I don't see that happening again. Uh, Cannonier versus Costa would be fun. Uh, mm-hmm. Marvin Vittori also already fought Costa and also fought Adesanya twice. So you can't fight him again. Derek Brunson already fought Adesanya, and he's coming off a loss to Cannoneer. So Alex Pere- uh, Pereira is the one who's going to be fighting for a title next. Obviously getting that free, not a free ticket because he has previous kickboxing experience, so it's a little different, right? Um, yeah. Coming... Coming from a long, extensive background where you also have a win over the champion does give you some, you know, some credit. And then having that impressive, the impressive wins that he's had puts him in that position. And I'd say probably Whitaker Vittori for uh, Whitaker Vittori. They were supposed to fight, yeah. and um, I, I think they're supposed to fight Cannoneer versus Costa. That was supposed to happen at one point. Um, I'd be down that with getting, that one. Yeah. Uh, and then Brunson is kind of on the way out. He's kind of, he said, I don't know if he's officially retired, but he's basically said like, I'm good. Like, I don't need any more money. I just fight cause I like it. Um, so then Darren Till, <laughs> uh, they fought. Did they? Oh, yes. That's right. They did. Yeah. Brunson beat him. Okay. Um, yeah. So middleweight's kind of a fucking mess, huh? <laughs> it, it most certainly is. I mean, like, there's Fun some fights. very distinct. Fun fights, very distinct levels, and all the guys at the top level have mostly fought each other. Yep. Yeah, there's a couple or of new have matchups. Already fought the champ. Like um, it? his, his thing is like Costa had well, such a bad performance against Adesanya. I don't know if he could ever get another title shot against well, him. Is, middleweight right now is a lot like when Demetrius Johnson was, you know, champ way down at flyweight. It's like cool. Everyone at the top. Five have all fought each other multiple times because he just keeps clearing out every person that comes. And yeah, he him. beats him, and then he also had Joseph Benavidez right below him, who yep. got three shots at him and couldn't he couldn't beat him. And that's the thing is Benavidez beat everybody else in the division. And look at what's going on here: you got Adesanya yeah. and Whitaker. Whitaker's had a couple shots at him, can't beat him, and Whitaker's just beaten everybody but, else. <laughs> but Whitaker can also, be, yeah. You know, Whitaker beat, beat Cannoneer. He can beat. I think he can beat Vittori. He has beat Brunson. He hasn't faced Pereira. Uh, he could beat Costa. Yep. But he's beaten so many people in in the middleweight division who are even in consideration for title title contention. So it's hard. It's hard when I even see this because I saw when when Jared Cannonier got the title shot. I know the only reason he got a title shot is because Whitaker can't face Adesanya again, <laughs> because Adesanya beat Cannonier pretty convincingly. Yep. So it's just it's one of those things where it's it's unfortunate that this is where the division is, but it's no through no fault of you know I, he had that brief foray into light heavyweight, taking on Blockowitz to try and get the title, 
But I think Adesanya has pretty much taken on every challenge that has been put in front of him. I don't think it's his fault. You know, uh, Usman fought fucking Jorge Masvidal twice, and that's essentially like a, a reprieve from actual fights, in my opinion. And, you know, those are get well fights, pretty much. Yeah. So uh, Adesanya hasn't had any of those. He's had nothing but challenge, like top tier challengers. Everybody, he's taken on everyone. And, you, you know, I don't think he's held up the division at all. I don't think Whitaker's done anything wrong, you know, because uh, in the past, you know, Colby Covington sitting out saying, I'm not fighting anybody. Um, when they had that heavyweight problem with uh, Stipe Miocic and Daniel Cormier that fucking locked up the division for three and a half years. Yep. Um, that shit drove me nuts. And it's really ruining a lot of guys' careers. And that's actively because two idiot, well, two guys and the UFC, but DC was the one who was controlling that shit. He had a lot of pull with the UFC. Um, basically in getting to control his own destiny. And it's kind of fucking over by everybody else in the division. Uh, this is not that case. It's just unfortunate that where we are and, you know, Costa can fight a lot of these guys in here. I just don't see him getting another title shot because he, he fucking lost to Vittori. He's lost to Vittori. He's like, I mean, what, what is his record? Well, in this, this fight should not move him up in the rankings at all. That's kind of the problem for me with this. It's like, Oh, absolutely not. It shouldn't do it's anything. Like, all right. You, you barely. I mean, he he won. He, he won, but like I don't want to shit on him not, too much. You did not look good. I uh, I think he looked fine. Like compared to, if yeah, it depends because I haven't seen Rockhold fight in a couple years. That's but what I'm if if Rockhold went out there and just got smoked by anybody else, and then then they fight and this Costa had this performance, I'd be like, yeah, this was a fucking shit performance from Costa. But who knows? Maybe Rockhold had a really good night and. Oh, well, yeah. no, because he was fucking tired. No, you're right. Kosa should have smoked him. Like, this, that was a shit performance. I, it, Ross, yeah, Rockhold had his hands on his head for two rounds, and Kosa couldn't really do anything to him. Yeah, he, you want to hear Kosa's Kosa, run to the title. Oluwale Bangboje. I'm pretty sure he's not in the UFC anymore. Johnny Hendricks, definitely not in the UFC anymore. Not a fucking middleweight either. No <laughs> welterweight. Uh, Uriah Hall, not a bad win, but... Uriah he's Hall's never been a top tier competitor. No, you I mean Uriah Hall has cracked the top fifteen multiple times. I think he's been in the top ten. He's been a cons- like he's just a really inconsistent performer. Yeah. Uh, the fight against Uel Romero, right? And you know my opinion on Uel Romero, but he like that fight. Good fight, interesting fight. I thought Costa won that one. That's fine. It was uh, you know, people were very. It doesn't matter anyway. That's his only good win in his first five fights in the. Uh, under the UFC banner. Oh, his first one was against Gareth McClellan. McClellan. Uh, and then he gets a title shot against Adesanya. Gets demolished. And then he fights Vittori fucking a whole year later. And just he just gets picked apart. Yep. Uh, I think Vittori just, out, uh, Vittori just fucking outworked him. And then in this fight, again, one year later, he has fought three times in the past three years. Yeah, that's that's right. bullshit. Yeah, I don't see him. You can't you can't do that, and I, then expect... I don't see him getting. Yeah, I don't see him getting another fight against someone in the top five immediately after this. I hope not. I fucking like, I, hope not. I'd see something like him versus Jack Hermanson or Darren Taylor or Andre Muniz, something like that. Maybe is his next fight. Someone else lower than him right now. Yeah, the fact that he's still ranked up there. I mean, I guess I get it. Because his fight against Vittori, he was competitive. I just, I don't know. All right, let's move on because this one I really want to talk about because I think okay. this guy is fucking insane. <clears throat> Marab Devalishvili versus uh, Jose Aldo. Holy shit, dude. This guy, and it's not like he didn't blow out Aldo as far as like beating the brakes off of him or anything like that. And that's not what I mean. It's his output. This yep. guy, his, his nickname is The Machine for a reason. Just work <laughs> I like the last fight that he had I had friends over when he fought Marlon Moraes and I was like I told I, I to my friend Gomez I took I, I lean over to him and I, before the fight starts I'm like okay Marlon Moraes hits really fucking hard and he's gonna cr- he's probably gonna crack Devalishvili but I don't know if it's gonna do anything if this fight goes longer than four minutes Devalishvili is going to fucking destroy him 
Sure enough, in the first like 45 seconds, Stavalashvili gets dropped by a shot that looks like it could have killed a small moose. And Stavalashvili gets right back up, and then he's trying to survive as Marlon Marais is beating on him. And then Marais starts to get tired. And then Stavalashvili just pushes back. Dude, he, if you, like, his only, um, the, the loss to uh, Frankie, I think it was Frankie Sands in the UFC. I think that one was, oh, no, no, it was Ricky Simon. That one is a bullshit one. And then he has a split decision loss to Frankie Sands. I'll show you guys his, his he should be, he should be undefeated in the UFC. Mm-hmm. Right. This the split decision to uh, Frankie Sands. Uh, maybe I'd have to go re- rewatch that one. But the Ricky Simone one where it was a KO. Look at the time on it. Round three, five minutes. That was not the fucking case. All right. He won that fight, had it he had it in the bag, but then gets caught in a mounted guillotine like he's being submitted with like 10 seconds left. So he's just paddling his feet, paddling his feet, paddling his feet trying to keep the blood moving and keeping himself awake the bell rings he stops kicking his feet because the fight is over and then because he stops kicking his feet he goes out but the fight has already ended that was total bullshit i was super upset about that and i bring that up because essentially this guy is fucking undefeated in the ufc yeah and he yeah the output is fun which granted it's that weight class so like John kind of Dodson, Cody it. Stamen, Marlon Moraes, but, but but no, yeah, it, it is even but compared it's, it's to those yeah. guys. It's a different level, though. Like he he was putting on, and that was how he won the fight because he didn't get a single takedown. I don't think in the nope. entire fight. Uh, I well, well, uh, I think one of them should have counted. Yeah, uh, I guess they didn't count it because, dude, Aldo was on all fours. If that's not yeah. a fucking takedown, I don't know what is. Wait, Jose, Jose Aldo was on his knees, hands and knees. That's not a that's a down position. Yeah, he, I think they can. I think they considered it him stuffing him. I don't know, but yeah, and Marab yeah, took he, him there. He took him down. Yeah, but he had to. He had to demonstrate a different part of his game for this, and it was. Dude, it, he it was. He was awesome. so good. So yeah. uh, this first round, uh, you look at the striking numbers here: sixteen to fifteen in favor of Devalishvili. I thought he landed fine strikes. Um, Aldo really didn't throw anything for the first two minutes. He was playing counterfighter. It was kind of bad to watch, to be honest with you. Um, from Aldo's point of view, like from watching Aldo, it's really it was really bad to watch. You weren't seeing the aggressiveness, and you weren't seeing zero. Yeah, you weren't seeing anything that looked like the Aldo that you know. And I can like tell you, you weren't seeing him chop the legs. You weren't seeing him really. I I could t- I could tell you why. Um, I think I wrote it down in here. So Marab landed really well on pressuring Aldo, just landing one shot. Um, like Aldo landed one good shot in that first round, as far as I'm concerned. I gave that first round 10-9 to Marab, even though Aldo tried to steal it. Um, Marab fired back, and then Aldo backpedaled again. Um, you can tell that Aldo doesn't want to get tired. That's mm-hmm. what it was, is Aldo knew that if he lost any part of his gas tank, Marab was not going to stop. So he had to save every, He had to be very conservative and not unload. Because he probably wasn't going to be, he he would probably have to get one good shot. So you could see that his strategy was keep it kind of even during the round, and then try to steal it in the past, like third in the last thirty seconds. You could see it because he did. He tried to do it in every round. Uh, in the second round here, Aldo did nothing again as he sat on his heels for four and a half minutes. Um, Aldo was just being super lazy. You know, uh, Marab pressed him forward. And if you look at the striking numbers, it's 11 to 11. But that's because they're not counting those th- knees to the thighs of Duvalishvili. Mm-hmm. Um, the total striking numbers were 62 to 25 in favor of Marab. And they're not counting those those knees to the thighs. But those were fucking hard knees to the thigh. And I thought those counted. And then meanwhile, Aldo is like like doing this thing where he's like, uh, like he's like fake yawning because he's bored. Dude, and then get off the well, fucking do fence. Something. Get yeah. off the fence. <laughs> You if, you're, if you're bored, make it exciting. Yeah, you don't want to be there. Okay, move. It's not yeah. my resp- It's as a viewer, it's not my responsibility <laughs> to like find it interesting that you don't want to move. Fuck off. Yeah. Um, I can't stand fighters who do that shit. Uh, I also don't like fighters who sit and hold on someone without trying to create offense but that's not what marab is doing marab is actively trying for takedowns he's trying to soften up the legs he's moving he's not just sitting there trying to conserve his gas tank and hold aldo and stop him from moving he's stopping aldo for doing anything 
And then in this third round, he landed way more strikes, 30 to, 30 to 12, um, definitely outdoing uh, Aldo. Uh, we got to look at the rankings here. This is this is rough. Jose Aldo is ranked number three. Um, also, I did not like the way that Rogan said it. He was like, Jose Aldo took a big chance, a big risk in facing you. Marab is ranked number six, and he's oh, yeah. fucking, essentially, like I said, un- essentially undefeated. The dude's on like a fucking 10-fight win streak. Taking a chance is bullshit. He's fighting the guy who he should be fighting. Yep. It's an... He's just about to crack the top five. Like, that's kind of... It's not like he was fighting someone at number 11. Right. Um, so, who's next? So, you have Marlon Vera, who's on a hot streak as well, um, just getting the win over Dominic Cruz. Uh, I mean, Josie Aldo fought Marlon Vera already, so we can't, we're can't. we not going to see that again. TJ Dillashaw is still waiting for the title. Um, but rightfully so. I made my opinion well known about that one. Yep. Uh, Peter Yan. Is uh, I don't think I don't know if he's matched up with anybody, but Sandhagen has fought Jan already, so I don't know if that's going to happen again. Vera has not fought anybody else here, so Vera versus Jan is fun. Vera versus uh, can't fight Dillashaw. Vera versus Sandhagen could be fun, um, but here's the problem: is Marab is in there too, so yep. Marab should definitely be in the top five after this. Um, oh, he will be for sure. So Marab ver- and here's the other problem. Marab and Sterling are teammates, and he said after the fight, I will not fight him. Like, we are brothers. We are not fighting. Interesting. And, a- well, he, so there's, there's, it's a different thing. And he explained it, but you can also infer a couple things. So, Marab is from Georgia, not the, yeah. not the fucking state, the country Georgia. Yeah. He came to this country and uh, a part of the Sarah Longo camp and worked with Aljamain Sterling. And he gives full credit to not only his success in MMA, but his ability to have the life that he wants in this country that he now lives in to Aljamain Sterling. And he's come up with him. And he says, he like he says, Aljamain Sterling is the reason I'm here. He's the reason I am as good as I am. It's because of Sterling. This isn't two guys who just happen to be in the same camp like ATT. This isn't two guys who, you know, joined a camp together um, because they were both trying to get into MMA. This is somebody whose life he, whose life and quality of life is given full credit to another guy. I I totally understand this. Okay, that makes a little bit more sense. Right. Actually, I think it makes sense from another standpoint of the weight class. Like, With bantamweight, there, there's not a likely chance Algerine's going to be champ for three years. <laughs> yeah, that's also or two true. years. Or maybe even by the end of this year, like it, I think Dillashaw to, can beat him. Yeah, like that, that's a tough that's test. I mean, like not to cut anything away from him, but like this weight class is infinitely shuffleable. Yeah, and his last champ. fight versus Jan was really close. Yeah, so yeah, I think that's you could maintain that friendship and maintain that stance, and then still potentially see him fighting for a championship in the next two years. I'm I I want Devalish Vili. Because I've been pretty high on him since I've seen him, oh man, years ago. I remember watching his first couple fights um, because his first two UFC fights were losses, official losses. But that second fight, I remember watching it against Ricky Simon and him just, you know, dominating Simon for three rounds essentially and then getting caught in that submission in the last 10 seconds. Um, Every fight has been like that. He just fucking outworks everyone. I'm going to ask the awkward question in the room. So it's cool that Marab feels that way. Let's say a year and a half from now, he gets his title shot, takes it. Does Alderman feel the same way? About them not fighting each other? Like if Marab was champ and Sterling was the next contender up, would would he take the same stance? Oh, I don't know. I'm guessing yes, based off of their relationship, because Sterling, the way Sterling talks about him, and they've yeah. they've they've talked they've both talked about it before, so yeah. I'm guessing yes. But that's that is an interesting question because that has happened like, before. It's, it's one thing for the immigrant mentality of like loyalty family, especially coming from Georgia. Like I, yep, I've actually been there before. It's a very cool country, like Atlanta. <laughs> no, I mean Tbilisi, <laughs> uh, but. You know, I don't know 
you know, when the belt's on the line. I don't know. That'd be interesting to see if this would work the other way. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I, I just want. I. I don't want him to get passed over because of bullshit. No. Um, the good news is, I think that he has a uh, really high ceiling and a long, a long uh, career ahead of him. So he has plenty yeah. of time to make it work. So that's good. We're not talking about a flash in the pan type of thing. So that's good. I just don't. I never like seeing fighters get passed over. Nope. And he definitely made the argument for him not to be passed over. So I mean, if it was up to yeah. me, like that's a title. That's a title shot yeah. earning fight. For me, that was the co-main event, kind of when you brought it up. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. An actual, like, co- like. Yeah, like the actual, this was the actual co-main event. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you on on, taking on uh, Lucy Pudilova. Uh, this fight happened. <laughs> uh, it was a fight on the card. Uh, Lucy ends up getting the win uh, via mount, uh, mounted elbows in the second round. This fight wasn't terrible. Uh, Lucy shot for a double to start the fight. It was a little weird. Uh, Yanan, Yanan didn't want to be on the ground. She wanted to be up striking, and Lucy didn't let her stay there. And then in the second, like uh, the second round, um, they were kicking legs back and forth. And then Pudilova ends up using a head toss to get position on, on the ground again, and then <clears throat> got got right into mount and started laying down elbows. <laughs> Yep, just stabby stab with the elbows. Yeah, they're pretty nasty too. Like they were like yeah. there were some concussive ones in there. They're they're pretty hard elbows. Yeah. And then um, I know not much to say about that one. There was I don't honestly I don't know why that was on the main card. Not like they were bad fighters. I just don't understand why that was on the main card. Yep. And I'm pretty sure those are bantam weights too. All right, uh, the opening fight. Tyson Pedro versus Harry Hunsucker. I Open think, with a bang. <laughs> yeah, Pedro is one of the biggest favorites on this card, yeah. and he gets it done. He lands a body kick that shuts down uh, Hunsucker's Hunsucker's body. Like he just he sh- he shut down his body, right? Yeah. Like this wasn't one of those ones where the pain added up or he knocked out the con- like he knocked him unconscious. It was he hit that spot in the body and Hunsucker couldn't. He just his body shut down and he crumpled down. So good win for Tyson Pedro. Yep. Uh, real Definitely. quick. Looking, Good introduction to the world for him. Well, yes. Uh, he, so if you look at his fight... His, I know it wasn't his debut. But I like know, that was I know. Kind of, so like, if you look at his fight history, he has got he started his uh, fight, his UFC career, with two impressive wins against Khalil Roundtree and then Paul Craig. Um, and then loses to Alir Latifi. No shame in that. Yep. Uh, and then loses uh, wins against <sighs> Soperbeg Safarov. Okay. Uh, lost to OSP and lost to Hua, to Shogun. Those are not good losses. Uh, Hua no, won is especially more... Not, especially not when they happened. That's no, good. the Hua loss is egregious. Uh, Ovin St. Pru is, you know, people can lose to him still. And that was back in 2018, so eh. But no, losing to Hua is unacceptable. In 2018. Since, <laughs> since then, he beat uh, Ike Villanueva in his last fight and now the knockout of Harry Hunsucker. So yeah. I think all of his wins are by by finish, sub knockout, sub knockout, knockout, and yeah. most of his losses. One of his losses was a unanimous decision. So Tyson Pedro is a light heavyweight. What does that mean? Well, that means he doesn't have to do a lot. Yeah. Uh, he could probably get ranked with one more fight, if not being ranked already. If I was to throw a name in the mix for this, I'd say Johnny Walker. Yep, down there at number 13. That's a good pick. Uh, yeah. Dustin Jacoby's coming off a win, though. I would not make him fight below him. Uh, yeah. Jimmy Crute uh, coming off that leg injury loss. Well, I think uh, in terms of people low in the top 15 that have some name recognition, like Johnny Walker's up there, and yeah. then coming off a highlight knockout, I think that's probably a good pairing. In terms of like recency, like something that's memorable that you can throw up there. So Johnny Walker, Johnny Walker is supposed to be fighting Ian Kutalaba in September. Yeah. Um, who else? Paul Craig is coming off a loss. He does not have a fight booked. Yep. That'd be a fun one, and it's a rematch with Paul Craig losing the first one, and now it's a different Paul Craig. So there's a little bit of story there. So that'd be fun. Uh, that is it. All right, that is the the main card. If you're looking for the prelims, it's in the next video. If you're looking for the PFL playoffs, I did that one two videos. Uh, I did that one in the last one. 
lots of fun stuff there. Um, good, good main card overall. Yeah, I was actually very like, happy. This uh, yeah. this did not feel like it dragged along. Even the fights that were grappling heavy, even in the prelims, you kind of knew it was going to happen. The main events, you know, yeah. it's you're dealing like with it, a guy who is an active grappler. It it did not look like a lot of depth on face value, just knowing where Luke Rockhold is in his career. And even, you know, I love Jose Aldo. He's still on the latter half of his career. So it was kind of seeing like it was just names versus fights with a lot of potential for impact or yeah, but, changing up divisions dude jose aldo is like i know he's number three but like no he was one fight he wins this fight and he gets another title shot he's still which is crazy considering his how losses long he's been. are to volkanovsky marais and jan i know which is crazy considering how long he's been in the game but it's still like it, oh hold on the volkanovsky doesn't count no, no. Uh, Marais was his first fight down here at this weight class, I think. Yeah. So he lost to Marais, lost to Peter Jan for the title. Anyway, uh, and then he gets three wins in a row against Marlon Vera, who is un- like unbeatable since then. Uh, Pedro Munoz, who has been fucking fantastic, and Rob Font, who only lost to Marlon Vera. Like, like I'm not. I'm not saying he's not dangerous. I'm not saying he couldn't actually beat Champ at this weight division. That's just like. Once again, why that should have been the co-main event, not the third one down. He's also not even that old. He was a champ really young. Is he not? I thought he was mid-30s. Yeah, he is. Okay. I know. I, yes. Like, I, you're right. He's a little little long in the tooth for uh, for a featherweight. Oh, well, not even a featherweight. Yeah. He's fighting at Bantamweight now, so. But still, like it, on face value, it didn't look like that much depth in the card but it was very good fights all the way through i was happy with it i had fun yeah. i liked watching it there was a uh, there was a couple of moments where i was like oh here we go again like this shit happened and then you know like like the paula Cosa fight i thought that was going to end in the first round with rockhold kind of just quitting I mean, he just fucking didn't he made it fun to nope. watch um rob devalish versus versus uh, jose aldo like i thought you know devalish was gonna like grind him out he did but he, you know, would separate and strike and then do some interesting stuff. Um, Tyson Pedro starting with a knockout. And then, you know, the female fight ended in the second round via TKO. Like, it's a pretty, pretty good card, man. Oh, yeah. Wow, a very, very good card. I would right. say the next fight night might look is a pretty fucking deep fight night. Mm. That's going to be a fun one. Which one? Serial Gan versus Taya oh, and Robert yeah, yeah. Whitaker in versus Marvin yeah. Vittori. This like, is the France one. That that's a fight. <laughs> Alessio De Chirico, that's a good one. Nasrat Hakbarast versus John Macdessy. Oh my god, that's a fucking banger. Yeah. Oof. No, oh, just gone Drudge. Uh, that fight got canceled. But still, those those top four fights for a fight night card, like, that's gonna be. Ooh, Banu Saint Denis. He's the one who took, like, a shitload of damage in one of his fights and just kept moving forward. And, like, they were like, how is this guy still standing? He he lost, but yeah. it was uh, interesting. All right. Uh, thank you guys for spending time with us. Thank you guys for taking the time out to watch the video. It means a lot to me. It means a lot to us. I appreciate, like, I appreciate everybody. If you made it this far, please subscribe to the channel. You're going to like every video I put out, I promise. If you made it this far in the video, you'll like the other shit that I do. Cover the UFC, PFL, Bellator, 1FC sometimes. And I put out two or three videos a week uh, going over all the fights and breaking them down uh, round by round. So I uh, appreciate all that stuff. You got anything? Yep. Yeah, and sometimes I join when I can. Hopefully more often. It's, we, yeah. we got like, a pretty good streak growing in the past month. So <laughs> a streak we'll, of we'll two. keep it up. <laughs> uh, no, that's pretty good. It's just, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, and for side note, just before we sign off here, uh, Nate is a more, um, what was I going to say? I would say more important individual in the world than I am. So he has responsibilities that require his presence a lot more uh, than me recording for a couple minutes. Uh, so that is why he does not join. He also is not always in the same location like I am. Yeah. I spent three weeks of July in three different States. So, yeah. so uh, Nate travels a lot. Nate uh, is a very important individual. Uh, I, I do that. know I do neither of those things, so that's why I record these. Um, but that's but this, we might have a surprise recording soon. Yes, 
hopefully. Be in a different state. Yes. Uh, so that's a little behind the scenes stuff. Uh, I right. appreciate you all for stopping by. It means a lot to me. Uh, hope you guys have an amazing week and I love y'all. All right, peace. Yeah.